Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie. I'm Tom. It's our society unit, and we're going to be talking about a boy whose nickname is the Rose Boy. He no longer is around. He passed away some time ago. But we're going to talk about、uh, the the issue that his mother is currently fighting for and why. Some of the background on this guy.、Um, his name, and I'm probably saying this wrong,、uh, Ye Yongzhi. Sounds close enough to me. He's also referred to as the Rose Boy, and he transformed Taiwan's LGBTQ plus rights, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So let's get to it, everybody. Let's read the entire contents of our lesson, and we'll be right back to talk about it. Taiwan is seen as a place of equality for LGBTQ plus people in Asia. However, this wasn't always the case. Life could be cruel to people who expressed their love or gender differently. This earlier mentality of hatred and intolerance may have caused the death of 15-year-old Ye Yongzhi in 2000. His tragic passing and his mother's fight in his memory became a solemn milestone on the path to acceptance for LGBTQ+ people in Taiwan. From a young age, Ye was perceived as being more effeminate than other boys. His teachers expressed concern to his mother Chen Junru over his liking for girly hobbies. As he grew, the bullying only worsened. Ye became too afraid to use the restroom during school breaks because he could not go in without other boys forcefully taking his pants off to check his gender. Chen says her son wrote her a desperate letter asking her to rescue him, but no matter how she tried to alert school officials. They remained passive about the situation. On April 20th, 2000, Ye went to the bathroom a few minutes before break time, but didn't come back. He was found lying in a pool of blood, and though he was rushed to the hospital, he soon succumbed to his injuries. The medical exam ruled his death as an accident due to an existing heart or brain condition that caused Ye to faint. Ye's grieving mother continued to push her son's case until three school officials were convicted of negligent homicide. They had not repaired a faulty water tank, which led to a wet bathroom floor and possibly Ye falling and hitting his head. To this day, no one knows what really happened, though some suspect Ye's death was the result of the school not preventing the bullying. Because of this, the effects of Ye's death didn't end there. Okay, guys, let's get started. We're going to be talking about this particular topic for two days. This is day one, and、uh, let's get right into this. This is Taiwan is seen as a place of equality for LGBTQ plus people in Asia. However, this wasn't always the case. If you have a, a a place, a country, a city, a school that's seen as a place of equality, it means people are being treated equally. Everyone's fair to everyone. It's hard to do that in society. Everybody has a different background and take on things, but that's what we're at least working towards: is being good and fair to everyone.、Um, this. Uh, article also well, this unit actually is also a big, a reminder of bullying. We don't want to bully anybody. Exactly. So yes, Taiwan is seen as a place of equality for LGBTQ plus people.、Uh, L means lesbian, G gay, B bisexual, T transgender, and Q is queer. But I can't remember what the plus is. Do you know what the plus is for? Oh, all the other genders that are being created right okay, now. Okay, thank、Just、you very much. Just includes everything. So that's the term for that.、Mm -hmm. And yes, indeed, Taiwan has been seen as a place that's friendly for people like that.、Mm -hmm. However, this wasn't always the case. It wasn't always true. Life could be cruel to people who express their love or gender differently, and this earlier mentality of hatred and intolerance. May have caused the death of 15-year-old Ye Yongzhi in 
also known as the Rose Boy.、Uh, this is an earlier mentality. That's just a way of thinking by the general population. Okay, so the mentality you might have towards certain things can be expressed in a definition.、Uh, we can talk about the mentality that people have regarding cruelty to animals, for example. Some people think it's a bad thing. Some people think it's okay. But、uh, this is an earlier way of thinking regarding hatred, which is basically hating someone, especially for a particular reason. That's right. So if you're really upset about something and you really、um, feel angry towards somebody, you might even get that、uh, intense intensity level up to the point where you hate them, and then. Hating somebody, of course, is the verb form, but hatred is a noun. So when you talk about the hatred of somebody or something, you're using the noun form. Intolerance is just not accepting something uh, that uh, is being forced on you. Sometimes you're not accepting of other people's views or beliefs or behavior that are different from your own. Maybe you're intolerant of others' religion, or you're intolerant of others' political views.、Hmm. Here, this is someone, or at least a group in his school, being intolerant of、uh, Rose Boy's. Own feelings about himself. So, yeah, intolerance is just not、uh, being able to get along with people that have different views than you, and sometimes it leads to bullying, and sometimes it it leads to things that are even worse. Indeed, and of course, the opposite of intolerance is tolerance, or to be tolerant,、uh, to be patient with other people. But if you're not patient with other people and you cannot accept things. And you bully them or whatever, then that is intolerance or being intolerant. And again, that may have caused the death of the Rose Boy, 15-year-old Ye Yongju, way back in the year 2000. Now, his tragic passing and his mother's fight in his memory became a solemn milestone on the path to acceptance for LGBTQ plus people. In Taiwan, now in this sentence we have the phrase "in someone's memory." You could also add an "of" there in memory of someone or something, which means you're remembering that person, you are commemorating that person or that thing. And of course, she has had this fight in his memory. In other words, she's fighting for him even though he's gone, and she's using his death as a way to fight for this particular issue. And、uh, this is a solemn milestone on the path to acceptance for LGBTQ plus people in Taiwan. Now, something solemn that means well, it's not particularly happy. It's formal, but maybe a little bit sad or serious. Right. So、um, this is on the path to something pathway to acceptance. When you get acceptance or people accept you. That's just、uh, meaning they're they're willing to、um, go along with what you want.、Uh, they're typically、um, okay with whatever you want to do. Some people、um, have a hard time accepting changes in plans.、Uh, they like a schedule, but if you have an easy acceptance to changes in your life, you'll probably. Be a lot less stressed out. So yeah, this was a solemn milestone. Oftentimes, when you have a goal, especially in business, guys, you have a project. You'll have different milestones along the way. They're like little goals on the way to the big goal. So this was a solemn or very serious milestone. Or accomplishment on the path to acceptance, or people accepting、uh, LGBTQ plus people in Taiwan. Yep, there's a lot of things that have to be done and have been done over time. So this is one of those milestones. Let's move on now to the next paragraph. Here it says, from a young age, Ye was perceived as being more effeminate than other boys. Effeminate means having female qualities, and we've probably known a boy or two like this before. They tend to prefer female things over male things, and sometimes that can make people feel uncomfortable, and they can get bullied as a result. Sometimes it's not even just liking girl things. Sometimes the way they move their hands, or they walk, 
or they gesture. It looks more like、uh, a feminine kind of trait than a masculine trait. I had a friend who. Had these effeminate gestures, but he wasn't gay. But a lot of the gay community kept trying to tell him he was gay. So everybody's different, guys. Sometimes、um, you just need to allow people to kind of express themselves and not put labels on them immediately. So yeah, effeminate just meaning looking more female-like. In the way things are done, and he seemed to be viewed that way by others. His teachers expressed concern to his mother, whose name is Chen Junru,、uh, over his liking for girly hobbies. This isn't,、uh, of course, the case anymore.、Uh, I think all kids are are encouraged to enjoy games. That are either、uh, usually set for boys, like guns and trucks and things like that, trains, and then toys for girls would be Barbie dolls, things like that. Those would be the more girly things. Girly hobbies might be putting on makeup or uh, yeah, uh, yeah, crocheting or knitting, doing those sorts of handicrafts. Boys usually don't like that stuff. Exactly. So those are girly hobbies,、mm. and her teachers express concern. Hey, he seems to like uh, uh, wearing dresses or knitting or hanging out with the girls and talking about their feelings and things like that. Those might be girly hobbies. And as he grew, the bullying only worsened. If something worsens, it gets worse. It's not getting better; it's getting worse.、Uh, for example, maybe you have some kind of、uh, sickness or something, and you go to see the doctor, but you get some bad news. Sorry, your condition has worsened. We're going to have to give you some other kind of medication for it. And the bullying just got worse and worse. And that's what happens in school.、Uh, those kids just bully people all the time. Yeah, so we might as well take a quick break here, Tom,、sure. and come back and continue on with、uh, Rose Boy's story. Right now, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello, everyone. 我是派老师。今天讲解的课程是六月七号 Unit Four, The Rose Boy Who Transformed Taiwan's LGBTQ Plus Rights. 台湾是亚洲第一个，应该也是目前唯一承认同性婚姻的国家。这标示着。在台湾和社会多数人倾向不同的伴侣，在法律上有一定的保障。当然，谈论到性别意识、性别平等议题的时候，绝不仅止于同婚而已，还有很多其他面向。不过，这个单元带着我们回顾台湾性别平等发展上很重要的一段路程，也就是《玫瑰少年叶永志》的故事。好，我们现在一起来看看学习重点。首先，先看到第一段，请同学看到第四个句子。第四个句子结构稍微复杂一些。我们请同学先看到主词的部分 ，this earlier mentality of hatred and intolerance 这个部分。我想请问同学，了不了解这个 this earlier mentality 所指的到底是什么？其实应该就是前面第三句大众的心态。好的，那这里。大众是什么样子的心态呢？其实，大众对于性别认同、性倾向不一样的人，其实在以前哦，是充满恨意，甚至于呢，就是排斥的心态。所以，这样子的造成什么结果呢？在第三句我们可以看得出来，就是其实如果性别倾向和性别认同和多数人不一样的话，其实日子过得很辛苦。再来，请同学看到。第四句这里有一个特殊的句型，就是在动词这个部分 ，may have caused。好，老师提醒大家 ，may 或者有时候我们会看到的是 might， 它后面如果加上 have， 再加上过去分词，这个表示对过去可能性的猜测。大众这样子的心态，造成了二零零零年的时候，这位十五岁的少年叶永志，他不幸过世了。好。再来，请同学看到第五个句子。第五个句子 ，His tragic passing and his mother's fight in his memory， 同样是主词的部分。请同学注意，这里的 passing 其实哦就是 death 的意思。啊，他很不幸的过世了。再来，请同学注意到主词 and 这个对的连接词连接了两个名词。那 And 后面这个部分，这个部分的名词 ，his mother's fight in his memory， 
。这里有一个片语，介系词片语，请同学特别注意，就是 in his memory。他的母亲后来呢，持续的做了很多的努力。为什么要做这么多努力呢？最主要是纪念他的儿子，为了他的儿子而做的。所以我们说 in his memory。好，再来，请同学看到第二段的第一个句子。From a young age, Ye was perceived as being 这个部分。好，请同学特别把动词的部分画起来。这里是被动语态，不过 perceive 这个动词相当的重要哦。其实，在这里的意思就是别人如何看待他。当然，我们用被动，就是在别人的眼中，叶永志呢被看待成什么样子？就很多人呢会觉得他有一些女性的特质。那当然 ，effeminate 这个字哦。这形容词在英文里面呢，其实也是属于比较贬义的形容词。再来，请同学看到第二个句子，他的老师跟母亲，就是叶永志的母亲联络，说：“你的儿子呢，有一些嗜好啊，比较像是女孩子的嗜好。”那表达了关切，英文里面表达关切的说法怎么讲？就是 express concern。那关于什么样的事情表达关切？我们就加上 over， 再加上那件事情，在哪一方面表示关切 ？We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Today we're featuring the Rose Boy, and he transformed Taiwan's LGBTQ plus rights. And the Rose Boy's name was Ye Yongzhi.、Uh, he died in the year 2000. And remember, his teachers were kind of concerned and、uh, talked to his mother. Yeah, he likes girly hobbies, and of course, because he was more effeminate than other boys,、uh, he was bullied, and the bullying only got worse. It didn't improve, or at least he didn't uh, uh, stop getting bullied. It just got worse and worse. And Ye became too afraid to use the restroom during school breaks because he could not go in without other boys forcefully taking his pants off to check his gender.、Now、that does not sound like a very、uh, friendly environment to be learning in. If you're afraid to use the restroom, they would have school breaks. Which、uh, in the U.S. might be called recess. You get to go outside and play for a while.、Mm -hmm. But、uh, he would not go in the bathroom because I guess there were some boys waiting there for him. If he went in there, they would forcefully take off his pants or his trousers or his shorts to check his gender. Yeah, you act like a girl all the time. You're effeminate, so we just want to make sure what your gender is. Are you a boy or a girl? Yeah. So. I'm sure he was terrified、uh, of this kind of bullying. So as he grew, the bullying only worsened. It got worse and worse over time. Sometimes you can take a word like "worse" and add "en" and turn it into a verb, and that's what we're doing here. It worsened. It got worse over time. Ye became too afraid to use the restroom during school breaks. Because he could not go in without other boys forcefully taking his pants off to check his gender. Just for the record, it can be scary for girls to go into the bathroom because you don't know who's in there. Could be boys. So,、um, anytime we can keep our kids safe, I'm all for it. So, this was a problem.、Um, some boys get a, a little excited and start. You know, coming together in a mob, and then they make a life hard for whoever they're bullying. It's really awful. So he didn't feel like he could even go to the bathroom and be safe. If you do something forcefully, you're using force. You're trying、uh, to use violence to get your way, or maybe you're using. A tone of voice that sounds threatening. Maybe you're yelling, or you're just sounding like there's no、uh, choice for the person you're talking to. They'll have to do what you want them to do. But here, they were actually going to grab a hold of him and take his pants off to check his gender. Although checking your gender by pulling down your pants isn't really、uh, the case anymore because 
they feel like you know it doesn't matter what your pants,、uh, what what you see when your pants go down, you can still be a girl in today's world. That's a subject for another discussion. But again, he could not go in the bathroom without other boys forcefully taking his pants off to check his gender. Terrible. So also also、yeah. in this sentence, we have the the pattern: could not do something without something else happening. That means you try to do something, but something always happens anyway.、Uh, for example, I can put this in the Present tense. I cannot ride my bicycle in Taipei without someone trying to run me over. Wow! It seems to happen all the time. It's quite dangerous to ride a bicycle in Taipei. <laughs> and in this case, every time he went to the bathroom, there were other boys there who forcefully took off his pants to check his gender. And Chen says her the mother Chen. Chen.、Uh, yeah. She says her son wrote her a desperate letter asking her to rescue him. Mom, can you save me? This school is just a terrible place. They're bullying me, and the teachers don't seem. To care, but no matter how how hard she tried to alert school officials, they remained passive about the situation. They probably said, "Oh, don't worry, the bullying isn't so bad. He's just being oversensitive. He might seem a little effeminate now, but he'll grow out of it. Besides, our teachers are too busy with their classes; they don't have time to deal with this." So that's basically the kind of reaction she got. Yeah, it's too bad because you hope that、uh, the adults in the schools that you're sending your kids to will care about your kids and and protect them from any danger or harm. So if you're passive, you just don't react to anything, and that's kind of the reaction she got from the school officials. So on April twentieth in two thousand, Ye went to the bathroom a few minutes before break time. But he never came back. He didn't come back. He was found lying in a pool of blood, and although he was rushed to the hospital, he soon succumbed to his injuries. So he had obviously had some sort of accident happen, and it had hurt him to the point where he needed to be rushed to the hospital. If you succumb to your injuries, it usually means someone has passed away. They can no longer. Fight back and recover their health. They've succumbed to something. Right.、Uh, for example, you might succumb to the pressure at your job. There's just so much pressure, and eventually you just can't take it, and you have a nervous breakdown, or you quit, or start yelling at people, or whatever. And unfortunately, he died as a result of his injuries. The medical exam ruled his death as an accident. Due to an existing heart or brain condition that caused Ye to faint. So remember, nobody was really there. They don't really know what happened, but、uh, they had a medical exam. I guess maybe an autopsy or something,、mm-hmm. and they said, well, it was probably an accident because he has a heart. Condition or a brain condition, and when you say it's an existing condition, that means you have it at that time. Right. It says Ye's grieving mother. Continued to push, push her son's case until three school officials were convicted of negligent homicide. Wow, yeah,、um, which is a warning to teachers to make sure you're paying attention to the bullying in your class. You never know; it could come back to haunt you. If you're grieving, you're usually very, very upset and sad. Your heart is broken. Because usually, because of a death of someone close to you, could be an animal, could be family, it could be a friend, but you're grieving.、Uh, the the noun for this is grief, but、mm. to grieve is the verb. Exactly. So, of course, the mother was very sad about her son's death, as you would might as you might expect. Yeah. So. Yes, grieving mother continued to push her son's case until three school officials were convicted of negligent homicide. So the people at the school are probably hoping that this would just go away; there wouldn't be any trouble. But、uh, hey, this、uh, woman lost her son, and she wasn't going to give up. She、mm-hmm. was going to fight for justice. Right. So of course,、uh, as a result of her push. To get the school to be responsible for this、uh, situation, or to be responsible for her son's death,、uh, three school officials were convicted of negligent homicide. If you're convicted, you are accused by a court of law, and then they find you guilty, and you have to be punished. You have to pay a fine or go to jail. If you're negligent about something, it means you're failing to take proper care of something or somebody. 
So here it's negligent homicide. The teachers were convicted of that. If、uh, you're charged and convicted of negligent homicide, it means someone died because you were careless about keeping them、uh, from danger or keeping them safe. It's not as serious as premeditated murder when you think about、uh, going out and killing somebody and you make a plan, but you're still put in prison for a significant time. Right, it's kind of like accidental homicide, but of course they're still going to have to be punished for that. And what happened is they'd not repaired a faulty water tank, which led to a wet bathroom floor and possibly Ye falling and hitting his head. So that's why the、uh, three school officials were convicted.、Uh, they failed to repair a faulty water tank. There was a water tank in the restroom. And it leaked water onto the bathroom floor. It's possible that Ye Yongzhi slipped on the water and fell, and then he hit his head on the sink or some other hard object in the bathroom, and that led to his death. Right. So the medical examiner、uh, ruled that he. Had died because he had fainted because of some pre-existing condition that he had. Whereas after、uh, Chun, the mom made so、uh, gave, I guess she garnered a lot of publicity and support.、Um, it actually ended up being that、uh, her son was probably killed by the negligent. Uh, or the negligence, I should say. That's the noun, negligence, on part of the school officials who didn't keep that floor dry and safe for the kids. He was 15, but you know what? Anyone can slip. So,、um, if that's the case, we need to take better care of our kids. And to this day, no one really knows what happened.、Mm. Though some suspect Ye's death was the result of the school not preventing the bullying. That's what some people believe. It was the result of bullying, and because of this, the effects of Ye's death didn't end there. So yes, they they were convicted, but still,、uh, other people remembered that, and of course, that was a milestone in the fight for recognition and for respect、uh, of the LGBTQ plus community in Taiwan. And that brings us to the end of our discussion for today. Let's turn things over now to our Chinese teacher. 接下来，请同学看到第三个句子这里，特别看到 because 后面的部分，这里有双重否定 ，because he could not go in. Without other boys forcefully taking his pants off to check his gender, 那这里呢有两重的否定，就是 could not without 都有否定的意味。其实我们在理解上的时候，就想成什么？没错，他每次去上厕所，他去上厕所的时候，其他男生就会强行脱他裤子，说要检查他的性别。再来，请同学看到第四个句子。第四个句子这里。在 but 后面这个子句，请同学看到 but no matter how she tried to alert school officials， 请特别注意 alert 这个地方 alert 这个字很重要，它有三种词性。那当然，在这里的词性呢是动词，我们可以理解为提醒。所以这个叶永志的妈妈陈女士提醒学校的教职员，提醒校方。好，那请同学特别注意的是，当我们说到提醒的时候，这个 alert 的所谓提醒，并不是让人家想起什么，而是说会有什么危险。好，所以请同学不要把它跟 remind 搞混了。那虽然他的妈妈呢提醒了校方，但校方还是没有任何的作为。再来，请同学看到第三段的第二个句子 ，Yes, grieving mother。那请同学呢特别注意 grieving。这个形容词，好，这边呢其实是形容词，就表示呢是非常难过的。那为什么而难过呢 ？Grieve 其实呢跟名词 grief g r i e f 是相关的。不过这种 grief 通常都是死亡造成的悲伤、难过，所以在这里等于是这位母亲呢是因为她的儿子过世了感到非常难过，所以我们称她为 grieving mother。好，以上就是我们针对这课课文第一天的重点的讲解。谢谢大家。That's it for today, guys. We have another day to talk about the Ro- Rose Boy,、uh, the Rose Boy's experience and how he helped transform Taiwan's LGBTQ plus rights here. And for that, you'll have to come back. 
Right now, we gotta sign off. So thanks for joining us for English Digest. I'm Stephanie. I'm Tom. Goodbye. Bye.